It's three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackey, who didn't do sh**. He just, he just sits there and looks pretty. This is the O-Line Committee. Hi, friends. Hello. Hello. Hello, friends. Hello, all. And welcome to the Offensive Line Committee podcast and YouTube platform. If you could click the subscribe button and the like button, we would appreciate that. And then uh, my two big, burly, recently retired former NFL offensive linemen wouldn't have to come to your house and make you subscribe. So mm. do it on your own or Alex will come find you. Dude, I don't have is that a piece of gum on your that. that No, that's the thing they use for elementary school kids to teach them yeah. how to write. I steal all my kids' stuff. <laughs> I just steal my kids' pencils. They have to Come teach on. Boone how to hold a pencil the right way so he stops <laughs> eating I, them. Do I hold it like this? It's, it's not food, Boone. You don't uh, eat the eraser. Yeah, that lead will probably seep in, in your pores. In your mm -hmm. So, dumb football questions here. We love when you guys hit us up with dumb football questions in the YouTube comment section. We stockpile. We get to as many as we can. But the first dumb football question comes from me because last night... I sat down and watched the brand new Johnny Manziel documentary on Netflix, Untold, the Johnny Manziel story. Cannot and there's a part in this documentary. You guys have said this on the podcast before that, like, when you get cut from a team, they want your tablet back, like your playbook tablet and stuff. And they have control. The team and the league have control. They can just brick that thing so that yep. you can't steal it and bring it somewhere else, right? Just paperweight it. So they can track what you're doing. They can brick it. They can paperweight it, but they can see what your activity is on that thing. And uh, there, was a, there was a part, I won't spoil the whole thing. People should go watch it. But where Johnny's agent at the time, who's no longer his agent, but he heads up Rock Nation's football department now, Eric Burkhardt, I want to say, he, he was telling a story about how the team came to him during the first season and said, dude, your client, we got to get your client to watch some film. And he's like, well, I mean, like, he's got to be watching some film, right? And they said, we went into his tablet, and it said 0, 0.0 minutes of film watched, like into the season. So my dumb football question is, how? How is this possible? What do you mean, how? You saw what happened, right? You saw the demise <laughs> of a first-rounder in, like, what, three games? I mean, we all saw it. In order to be great in this league, and this is the one thing that Jeremiah and I always push to our boys, is you have to be great in the classroom. You have to learn how to sit there and watch goddamn film in front of you until you are a master of it. You have to learn until to love you, it. You have to dude, learn to love it. You have to find the fun in it. You have to literally be able to look at play after play after play. I mean, I can't tell you how many times, and Jay can tell us, we sat in there for over two hours, three hours, take a break, come right back in for another two, three hours. And it's all the same film and it's everybody because all of a sudden you'll go through everything and one guy is like, wait, I'm not clear on this one thing. And while you're like, hey, it's only one guy, that one guy could be playing a key role in this. And if he lets somebody through, you're just destroying the season. And that's why I get so fucking mad when people are like... Oh, it's okay that he doesn't watch film. Like my guy down in Arizona. It's okay that he wants to play Xbox, blow off some steam. Dude, you wanted to be here. You wanted to be here. And so did I. And I'm here because I don't want to play video games right now. I want to watch film. And I want to learn more. And I need to know more. And when you're quarterback, the guy who you are like, guy, we're paying you so much money just to know everything. He's like the guy that when you have a question and the offensive coordinator is like, man... I'm not sure, and I'm telling you that don't ever fucking happen. You go to the quarterback and go, hey, I got a question. What do you want to do about this? And he gives you the answer that is the ultimate answer. Doesn't matter what the OC says. Doesn't matter what the HC says, what the GM says, what the owner says, what the QB says goes because he is the boss between the white lines. And when he doesn't know what's going on, it really, really hurts us up front. It hurts the guys next to him. It hurts the guys on the outside. It just kills the whole team. And now you know why that was such a dumbass pick that everybody was like, what are y'all doing? I mean, you can get away with it in college when you're special, right? Like, because he was special in college, right? But a lot of it was Mickey Mouse shit, running all right. over the place, like RPOs, one zone reads, like all that stuff. You can't do that at the next level. You just can't. And the fact that he watched zero hours of film, and the, I'm going to get on my soapbox here. The fact that his agent was not telling him what he needed to do, or the fact that his agent was telling him it's okay, or the fact that his agent was like, fake a heart attack, and your dad's having a heart attack, so you don't have to drug test because I know you're going to pop positive. Shame on that freaking dude. Yeah. right? Like You are hired as an agent to help your player be the best he can be. 
And the fact that you're doing that stuff to try and hide stuff from the teams, hide stuff, you are doing a disservice to that guy. All you're trying to do is trying to get him drafted as high as he possibly can so you can make the most money possible. And that's what's wrong with agencies. That's what's wrong with the eyes getting in this for the wrong reason, and it pisses me off. It's why I got into this business, to help players, because sometimes you just need a guiding hand. You just need a guy that says, hey, this is how things are done. And I'm not going to be your yes man. I'm not going to sit here and hold your hand. I'm not going to sit here and pat you on the back and say, oh, it's okay, when it's not okay. Right? right. And if you don't surround yourself with the people that are going to help you do that, you have things like Johnny Menzel that happens. You see guys that flame out in the first round because agents are so terrified to get fired that they're just yes men. And it's, not, it's a disservice to them. It's a disservice to their family. And you're helping them lose millions of dollars. And it's just it's sad. It's just really sad that he would allow a player to do that and not help mentor him and guide him the way that he should. Absolutely. And that's another thing, too, is like you think about a guy like that who's taken in the first round and everyone's like, we're going to put all of our eggs in this basket. Everybody on the team's like, all right, I guess we're going all in on this rookie, right? Like, we're going to do what we're going to do. And everyone's toeing the line and everyone's like, what's going on? And you're like, I don't know. The dude that's supposed to be standing front and center just apparently can't sit down and watch film. Like, what do you mean? He doesn't understand what's going on. He doesn't understand what we're doing. He doesn't understand what the checks are. He doesn't understand why we're checking. Like, that's such a pivotal part of football. Understanding why we're going from one play to another. Because if you don't, you're an idiot. And you don't even know what you're looking at anymore. And it's like, dude, what am I doing out here at this point? Am I sure? He was I out there playing be- Madden. He was out there and, playing Madden. And, and Jay was- said it. Some guys are talented. There are some tackles that we have played with that they didn't have to know a lot. And we let that slide because it was like, hey, man, when it came down to I need a boomstick... The boomstick came out. There was never a no, okay? It was never like, no, I'm not ready. It was like, all right, what do you need? I need you to do this today. And I need you to be a big dog for us. I need you to take care of number so-and-so all day. Done. Good. That's easy for everybody, right? But when the guys like check in and you're like, why are we we checking? Why is he not checking? Why is he not throwing the hot route? Why is he not doing what he's supposed to be doing? Why does he not see this? We've seen this all week. Like That's why guys don't understand is when you go to the game, this should be like a review of what you've been watching for the last 100 hours. You should be able to know everything about everybody. Their stances should be glued into the back of your brain. And if they're not in what they should be in, it should be an alert automatically. Like, why is this guy not doing what he did on film? This is not right. This is different. This is wrong. Somebody show me something. Are we checking? Are we not? All of a sudden, the safeties don't look like they did on film. You should be like, dude, I've been watching you guys for seven days, and I've never seen this. All right, everybody, get ready. Something's coming. Like, it's really not hard. And this is what we expect. If they don't give us this, report back to us. Got it. It's that simple. You know, and can it, I – this is a – oh, Jeremiah, jump in with I – I have a sort of a follow-up to this Johnny Menzel thing, but go ahead. I, I mean, I was just going to finish it with it's really, really selfish because there's 89 other guys that were on that team that wanted to win and wanted to be there. And you start talking about some some of his teammates were. I mean, you talk about a Hall of Famer, right. played 10,000 – like Joe Thomas. They draft a first-round quarterback, and Joe's probably like, okay – here we go. Let's do this again. Again, right? Here we go. And all of a sudden, it's like you're wasting the last years of my career. Which and is we can't do anything about it because we drafted you in the first round. Mm-hmm. We can't just cut you. We can't just move on. And he wasted the last years of Joe Thomas's career, right? Yeah. Like it's just so it's so sad and frustrating because yeah, it's his deal and he had other demons he was fighting or whatever. But when you're between the white lines, dude, you're doing it for the other guys on your teammate. And he let every single person in that organization down. Every single one. And you can cry a pity party for him or whatsoever, but at the end of the day, he fucked it up. He held, let everyone else in that building down. Everyone else. And it's no one else's fault but his own. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, he, he, but we, we're, I don't even think that's harsh because we know how many answers they give you every week. If you have a question, there is 10,000 people to ask. And if you're like, hey, I need to see a video of this or I need to see a cut up of this or I, what do they do out of this? You could ask the most fucking weird question and they'll be like I'll get an answer for you I'll get a copy of it I'll get it sent to your iPad I'll get it on paper for you because everybody there has one job just win baby just win and Jay said it and I've said this so many times that's my biggest gripe with guys is the guys that don't care and then you put them on a team with a bunch of guys that are trying really really hard and then you have a guy like Joe Thomas who's literally doing it for the brand and going out there every single game and playing over 10,000 consecutive snaps and you're like eh, it's not important to me it's important to you you're an idiot and it's like no dude you're the idiot At the end of the day, you look like the biggest fool to everyone because here are all these guys in front of you, talented, Alex Mack, all these dudes in front of you that you could have easily won a million games. 
and you fucked around and you were out late at night and this is like our teammates would do this and I'd be like, dude, I'm going to blow, I'm going to lose my mind. Like I'm just going to explode because we're so close to what we want and this guy wants to go out and party and we could have done that for the last nine months, but <sighs> he wants to See, do it now. I like, feel like this is what one thing that struck me just having gotten to know you, Alex, over the years, it, it it's, and I, and maybe this is where some of your frustration comes from. Johnny partied his ass off in college was an immature, irresponsible frat boy still got drafted in the first round, despite all of that. And then didn't take it seriously in the NFL, right? You partied your ass off in college were an irresponsible frat boy by so your true. own words, right? So like true. you were an idiot. Fair whatever. Wilder. Yes. Bad. It Just cost bad. you first round, second round draft status undrafted, but then you know, maybe the people around you, it was partly exactly you, it was partly, it was. but, but you, you didn't go down that path. Does, does your reaction to this Johnny Manziel stuff, not watching film kind of seeing now, does some of your experience come through in your emotion when you talk about this? Oh, absolutely. I have no pity for any of these dudes. When I got to the league, it was, my circle was super tightened up and they was quickly like, Hey, you don't need to be back in Ohio for a very long time. You need to be here with us. You need to be in Frisco. I, at the time, Mike Singletary was the coach and it was his first year being the head coach. And it was like, here we go. Right. And I, I've told this story, walked in first step in the building. He pulled me aside and was like, I'm going to break you like a wild horse. Like, this is just going to, I'm, you have no idea how much trouble you're in. And I'm waiting for you to mess this up. And I was like, I, dude, I really love football and I don't want to mess this up. And I want to be here for as long as I can. And I see guys like that. And I saw guys like that. And I would try to come to them on the side and be like, dude, you remind me of myself a lot. You need to seriously slow down. You need to stop and pay attention because if you get kicked out of here, there is no other team that's going to want you for the reasons that they kicked you out of here. Like, it's okay to get cut after training camp and be like, hey, he just didn't make our team. But it's not okay to get cut and be like, this dude's a loose cannon. He is a problem. Because that's one thing they know they can't control. I can't tell a grown man what to do, do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can tell you what to do and what the rules are. And you can go break those rules freely, but then you're going to get kicked off the team. And it's like, these are the things that guys don't realize. And it's like, you have such an opportunity to go out. And it's so fun because it's not about the, the playing all those games. It's about all the guys you meet along the way and all the stuff you do after. And it just makes it so fun. And all of a sudden, I look back and I'm like, dude, how many guys did we know? Like, Jay, how many guys did we know that just couldn't figure it out? And you're like, dude, seriously. They're giving you all the answers. Yeah. They're literally giving you the answers to the test if you just go out and work really hard and sweat a little bit. Like I tell my kids, you got to sweat a little bit to do this. It's going to be okay in 10 years. You're going to turn around and go, man, that was a hell of a ride. Now look what we got going for us, right? Like, And a lot of that is – and that's why we tell our guys in the gym too is the maturity factor is a huge thing now. It's the oh. first thing people are looking at. It's the first thing you're being judged on. If you're a dumbass, you are going to the back of the line. We don't want to deal with these problems anymore. If you can handle yourself like a man, sit up straight, shake my hand, look me in the eyes – all of a sudden, we're off to a good start. How low does the bar have to be to pass here is my problem. Really? That's all we're looking for? Just guys well, that kind of want to be here? Like, well, dude, when this. I was going in, the guys were fighting each other to get in those doors. I mean, I'll tell you this. I heard more in the last two years from the scouting term. You know, I always pick up on what's the hot scouting term. Like, what are guys really looking for? What's the word around the league? And I heard from numerous people this year, like, they're trying really, really hard to find guys that are want that – want to play in the NFL because they love the game, not because they can. Right. Right? Because there's a very distinct difference there. There is plenty of players that can play in the NFL because they are so talented. Mm -hmm. But they're looking for guys that want to play in the NFL too. Right? So many guys are just like, oh, I'm, I just want to play in the NFL so I can make some money and do my thing and bounce. Not because I truly love the game of football. And if you don't truly love it to the deepest part of your core, you will not make it. Because it is so know. hard. It is so hard hard to make it in the nfl to be a i mean i think there there was that instagram video going around that like since 2001 there's been like twenty six thousand people that have played one snap in the nfl just a single snap in a real game like that's a small number and they're trying to find those guys because if you put all your eggs in one basket like the johnny menzels right and we can name off a hundred players that thought we were going to be great and then all of a sudden they get in the league and do nothing Marcus like Russell. you're screwing an entire organization you're screwing with gms and owners and people are getting fired over your actions like that's why this people say the scouting process is too harsh but i don't think it's harsh enough 
No, like you have to be able to really figure out who this player is in between the ears, in between the white lines, and you don't have a ton of time to do it. And if you guess wrong, you could screw four years up in an entire organization if you're drafting a premier's position. But you know how I feel about that is that a lot of it is because when we came in the league, they could ask you really bad questions. They could really mess with you. Like I, when I got sat down in rooms, there was things thrown across that I was like, man, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I've done a lot of bad things, and I don't feel comfortable <laughs> in this room right now. <laughs> like I, I, whatever it costs, I will get up and walk out. Because, but, but the whole thing was shut your mouth. Like, don't say a word about it. And now everybody's like, oh, they're asking me this and they're asking me. So they're like, you get in these rooms and these coaches are like, it's really hard to try and figure you out when like back in the day, it literally took five minutes. Yeah, Twitter didn't exist, right? You you couldn't couldn't run to Twitter and be like, this guy said I was boring. I ran to my agent though. Oh, yeah. and they were like, they were like, dude, that's nothing. I was like, no, really, that, that crosses so many boundaries with me. They were like, we've heard way worse. Calm down. Take it easy. I'm trying to figure you out. I'm trying to figure out who are you as a real person. And they were like, did you get all like this when they asked you? I was like, I tried not to. And they were like, well, now they know who you really are, dude. Like, <laughs> right? They're going to figure yeah. you out just by a simple question. Do your eyes get super crazy? Or are you like, whoa? Or are you like, nah, man, Psh, cake and butter. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what they used to do, and that's why it was. I feel like it was easier back then, and now it's like, my God, everyone's putting on a show and charades, and what is this, and how is this, and dude, it's become a lot. There was another. Uh, I'm, I'm spoiling the episode here a little bit, but I think I think it. I won't, I won't give away all the details, but because people should watch it. But um, Cliff Kingsbury was the offensive coordinator for Johnny Manziel at Texas A&M under Kevin Sumlin like ten years ago. Yeah. So Kingsbury was prominently featured as a commentator on this, like he was one of the documentary uh, interviews and you know what? He, uh, he kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And that, so, so Johnny's dad said at one point, you know, we send him off the co- to college and we expect him to be sort of parented by the coaching staff to some extent. Yeah. And it just felt like once he got a little bit of fame and started hanging out with Drake and LeBron as like a 19, 20 year old, Everyone just let him do whatever. And so then they cut to Cliff Kingsbury, and, and Kingsbury basically says, yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, you know, whatever he had to do to, you know, he wasn't getting arrested, and, you know, he would show up and play his ass off, and he'd be awesome during the games. And so, you know, the way we looked at it was whatever he had to do to go play like that on a Saturday, we would just kind of look the other way as long as he wasn't getting arrested. It's, I've, talked and, about, I've talked about this before, though, Mackie. It's, it's the scale. Right. There's a scale at every level, but the NFL specifically, the scale is like this. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say I know this might be on the audio, but for example, say the scale is even. Right. The scale is even as long as the side of the scale, one is on the field play, one is off the field, like ridiculousness. Right. Or even right. just off the field. Right. There's a scale. As long as the scale is tilted towards production on the field, you can get away with stuff off the field. Right, like it's okay. They'll find a way to work through it. And that's what Cliff was saying. Like he was productive. We were winning. He wasn't getting arrested. Like, and we were. He was productive. Now you get in the NFL, and that scale drastically shifted for Manziel. Right, off the field stuff was through the roof of nonsense, and his production was trash. Yes. And that's when you see guys just get out of the league. And I'm saying it's not just for bad stuff too. Tim Tebow was an example of this for his off the field stuff being good things. Right. Being a Christian, he was, yeah, man. he was just more just like a, more just like a media lightning media, rod, media right? lightning rod, right? Like, and it got to the point where his production was not worth the media circus that it came with, right? Mm-hmm. And it goes Antonio Brown's another example, right? Like, there will yeah. always find a way to cover up the off the field stuff as long as the on the field production is fine. But the second that 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 scale gets to even or slightly above with the off the field, you're done, because now you're screwing up the rest of the team. Colin Kaepernick. Right, because guess what? If you sign one of those guys as a team, like as if you're a GM and you're like, "Hey, let's sign Colin Kaepernick right now, right? Like tomorrow, let's sign Colin Kaepernick." What are the next ten days of media going to be about? Mm. Are they going to be about your team? Are they going to be about how you're preparing for the, your next opponent? Or is every single question going to be like, "Well, what did Colin do? How did Colin handle this? What do you think about Colin saying this or doing that or standing for this or whatever it may be?" And it becomes a distraction. And if you have distractions in the league, you don't win football games. You can't win football games in the league with distractions. You have to be 100% focused on the task at hand. And so when you bring a player like that in, and Manziel's a perfect example, he was all distraction, no production, and it's why he was out of the league in three years, two years, however long it was. Like, 
you, you can't put up with it. You can't put up with it in the league because it's a cancer in the locker room. It's a cancer in an organization. And to be fair to what Jay's saying, like a distraction off the league, like off the field, and a, I don't know, how would you say it, like an incident are two different things. So like Correct. if there's like a little – your production on the field is going really, really well. And say there's a few disputes about you going off the field. There's things that they'll be like, hey, listen, enough, right? Like, we're just going to hush, hush this. But the minute you become a distraction, they're going to give you one warning. And you better be really good to get that one warning. And they're going to be like, listen, bud, we're answering a lot of questions about you and not about us. And this is not how this team operates. One more and you're gone. Like, they just can't Look at can't the gambling deal. guys. The gambling guys, right? You're gone. seeing guys that are getting caught for gambling. The studs, what happens? Okay, serve your suspension. Come on back. Right. We'll be okay, right? Because they're productive. The guys that are role players that are not super high talented, they just cut them. See yeah. ya. We're done. Move on with you, this. right? Like, it, it's a completely – it's not a fair scale by any means, but it is yeah. the scale in which you operate as an NFL player. But I think, yeah. if anything, it's the most fair it's ever been. At least people will kind of come out and tell you, like, listen, you're out. And then they'll, they'll <laughs> suspend the next guy, and it's like, yeah, he's our, he's our starter. What do you want us to do? Yeah, we'll serve exactly. his suspension. That's why we that's why we give him a suspension because that's his penalty. And when he comes back, he'll be a part of this team. Like they don't even hide it anymore. Back yeah. in the it day, is, it is like funny. Like to. media, the media outrage over like, well, that's wait a second, that's a double standard. That's preferential treatment. Correct. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. We're paying this, this guy a lot works. of money to do a good job. <laughs> if we miss him for six games. He'll get docked his money. Whatever, whatever. He'll come back and do the same job again. Like yeah. it's yeah. Calvin it's Ridley kinda, was out for an entire year. But to be fair, year. though, like, to be fair, if the guy does the punishment, what else is there really to prove? Like, if you cut him, what is there really to, you know what I'm saying? It's, no, yes. Yeah. At, at that point, it's like, wait a minute. You're mad because he had a service suspension and then came back. Well, you're mad they didn't cut him. Like, well, well there, why there's do we a, have suspensions? Yeah, I, why not just a cut whole everybody? Other, there might be a whole episode. Like, that's my biggest thing is. But think about, like, some of these. Suspensions. You get punished or whatever, and there's been examples. I mean, you know, I'm trying to think of, like, I guess Kareem Hunt maybe is one of them where someone yeah. does something that warrants a punishment or something, and it usually it's like, well, now you got to now you got to cut this guy, right? But then the next team just immediately signs him anyway. So was he punished? Yeah. You know, no. I don't know. That's so the like, the, the, so the Chiefs have to take a punishment, and the Browns get to pick a guy up. It's it's a weird. It can be a weird, weird scale, you know. It's the NFL. So. Nothing Anyways, watch there. film. Watch film is the moral of this episode, kids. Watch your just damn care. Film. If you're gonna make it in the NFL and you want to stay in the NFL, you gotta care. You yeah. gotta care. You gotta love it because you can't hide. You can't hide in the NFL. There's no place to hide. There's no one to run to. No one's gonna be okay. You're just gonna be done, and then the dream is over. Right. Yeah. And then you're a guy at the bar like I used to do it. And you're like, stop, dude, stop. And <laughs> I, used to, I mean, I used I think, to be awesome. Yes. I think the one thing too to say is like you'll be no, you'll they'll find you quicker if you're really not there because you care. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we notice right away. Like who's the guy that's putting a little bit extra into it? Who's actually like when the coach gives you a silly thing like, hey, go home and look this up tomorrow. Who really comes in and goes, hey, I looked it up. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it might be stupid, but it's still like who's paying attention? Who's mm -hmm. listening? Yeah, because you know, the coaches used to do that to us, and me and Jay go in the cold tub and looking up right away and be like, "What the hell was he talking about?" What was he that <laughs> right? And, or you, and, and you come back tomorrow, like, "Hey, that doesn't make any sense." And he's like, "Yeah, you're right. We we looked at it again last night too, and we, and we were like, yeah, we thought so.' Yeah, we know. <laughs> come on, there's we, we we find you guys. Yeah, you mean you weren't uh, you weren't hung over at the Bellagio the Sunday morning of uh, an NFL football game? That's what Johnny Menzel was. So yeah. I recommend watching the whole thing it'll infuriate you guys oh i even saw more one, than you already i saw are, the so. one clip of the the no film thing and i like instant blood pressure raise the like, agent thing is going to make you the most mad. the agent thing is going to put me over the edge like it's... i might have to do an emergency <laughs> press conference online and just warn people of those type of people you you should yes i'm so excited to watch this yeah, yeah. All right, well, we'll get your full review on a future episode here. Thanks for hanging out with us here. Please click like and subscribe on the YouTube channel and keep hitting us with your dumb football questions. And make sure you study your playbooks and watch film.